Hello. I'm Atuba George and I'm so, so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, before going to the broadcast today, can we call for that daily bread? And as we do this, now we do this every day on this broadcast. And I want you to realize something. We are not just talking. We are releasing our faith in what Jesus said. Praise God. So as we do this, have an expectation in your heart that today every need that will show up in your life will be met. Are you ready? Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand and I receive right now my daily bread for today. In Jesus' name, every need for this day shall be abundantly supplied for. In Jesus' name, amen. Trust me, a miracle will happen today. Now, let me tell you something. When you begin to see these miracles, don't be quiet about it. Some people, God starts something in their lives. And after a period, it stops. And, and they wonder, why did it stop? I'll tell you why it stopped. You didn't acknowledge that thing as from the Lord. Sometimes a miracle happens in your life and you are suspicious of it. You think it's a fluke. You wonder, can I trust this thing? There are people like that. You remember God and the children of Israel for 40 years, 40 years. Think about it, meaning a child that was born when this, the manna started was 40 at that time. And for 40 years, God was giving them manna every day. I mean, every day for 40 years. I mean, even if you are crazy, you should get used to that kind of lifestyle by then. See, 40 years is enough, is enough training you can give a generation. So you should get used to that kind of lifestyle. But guess what? The children of Israel still couldn't believe God. They still couldn't believe in the supernatural. You know, you can't explain how this manna comes every day. But you know, you can as well just uh, imagine a visitor coming to visit you. Yeah, no food in this house. What are you guys going to eat tomorrow? Say, ah, tomorrow, don't worry. There will be food in this house by tomorrow. Say, how? You, you didn't go to the market and I need to eat very early tomorrow. Say, don't worry. Just go to sleep. There will be food tomorrow. See? And then the person wakes up and then there's food. Say, ah, well, how did the food come? God supplies it every day. But he said, they couldn't believe that. I wonder, maybe they kept thinking every day, are you sure the manna will show up today? Are you sure it will come today? I wonder how, you know, the Bible says they couldn't enter in because of their own belief. So they couldn't, I, I mean, if God is doing something like that, you know, and the Spirit of God told me this one time, he said, do you know, if they had asked me for anything else I would have given him. You remember they asked God for meat and God wasn't angry that they asked him for meat. He, it was Moses that made God look angry. It was Moses that was angry so he made it look like God was angry with them. When Moses brought it up to the Lord, God said, no problem Moses, they will have meat. And Moses said, Lord, where are you going to get meat to feed this food? Do you know how many we are? Oh, that was what God got upset. He was actually upset with Moses, not the children of Israel. Praise God. So listen, believe God for miracles daily. David told us this. He daily loads us with benefits. Now, David was not speaking in prophecy. David was speaking from the place of experience. He daily loads us with benefits. He was speaking of the character of God. Now that's what we call Logos. He was speaking of the character of God. So this God that you call your father, 
daily loads with benefits. Now that's what Jesus came to enforce when he told us to pray that prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Now daily bread doesn't just mean physical food. Don't get that wrong. Daily bread means everything I need to do well today. The wisdom that I need today. If there is any sickness in your body, remember the Bible says healing is the children's bread. So he, he, he calls bread, healing, bread. See that now? So that's to let you know that bread is not just about physical food. Bread can be the wisdom you need today. Bread can be the, the idea that you need to function today. Bread can be the answer that you need before you get to work today. Now, whatever was a challenge for you yesterday, it can come today as a bread. The answer can come today as bread. You, you were wondering, oh, how am I going to solve this thing? How am I going to get this thing done? I need to report this thing by 12 noon today. Oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Hey, remember, when we pray this prayer, see that now? I demand my daily bread. It can be the idea will just drop in your heart. It can be physical supplies. It can be money. It can be healing that you need today. Maybe you, you, you slept yesterday and your back was aching you. Hey, it shouldn't continue today. Even right now, you can put your hand at that place that is hurting you. Yes, you can put your hand there right now. Right now, right now, put your hand there. In the name of the Lord Jesus, say this with me. Say, Father, I receive bread for this healing now. I receive the bread for this pain right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You can begin to bend now and check yourself. You will see it's gone. It's your daily bread. Praise God. This is why you shouldn't have any protracted illness in your body. What have you been doing with your bread? Praise God. What have you been doing with it? Thank you, Holy Spirit. I, I sense the anointing of God's Spirit so, so strong. I don't know what you are trusting God for at this time of your life. I don't know what you're believing him for. I don't know what you have been praying to God about. I don't know what you've been crying about. Hear me, hear me. I stand by the spirit of prophecy and I declare this over you. Before Friday ends this week, that thing that you cry about, you will begin to see the clear solution to it. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes, you will see clear solutions to it. Because he, he wipes away your tears. He doesn't enjoy seeing you cry. He loves you so much. Like I told you yesterday, if he was willing to give Jesus, then think about it. What is he going to withhold from you? Now, the Bible tells us that the, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So you always want to find out what is Jesus saying? That's what the testimony of Jesus is. What is Jesus testifying about my life? What is Jesus testifying about my job, about my health, about my finances, about my relationships, about my daily needs? Everything that I'm involved with, what is the testimony of Jesus concerning it? What is Jesus testifying? What is he testifying? That's the testimony of Jesus. When you get to know that, now hear me, everything in life seems to oppose the testimony of Jesus. 
So don't just think that naturally you just, mm, I'm, 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 I was born in church. I, my parents used to go to church. I grew up going to church. And, and you, you think because of that, Jesus will just be on your side and be walking for you. Hey, you've got to believe his testimony. Now, how would you believe his testimony until you know them? See that now? How would you believe? And I'll tell you this. The understanding of how real Jesus is to you today. That's why he said you need to get it clear that Jesus is not dead. He's not dead. He is alive. And I'm telling you this truth. He is so alive. He can show up in your room today. <laughs> I, I, I'm not listening. When he shows up, I'm saying, oh, oh, something showed up. No, he is so alive. He can show up and say, hey, I'm Jesus. <laughs> and, and he said, whoa. You know, people, it's, it, it's amazing. I don't know if I have enough time to share this now with you. But let me see how far we'll go. It's amazing. People don't know who Jesus is. They don't know. They all the all they think about or all they can um, get to wrap their minds around is the idea that the Bible gives about him. He's a good man, yes. He healed people, yes. He did many miracles, yes. He fed five thousand people, fed four thousand people, yes. He raised Lazarus from the dead, raised several other people from the dead. Yes. He died for us. Yes. And then after all that, what next? He is gone to heaven. Mm. But you see, you don't understand. See, so you can't talk about Jesus without feeling the anointing. You can't. It's impossible. Except you're talking about another Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. People don't understand that before Jesus was born, how do I make you understand this now? I always put it this way. He existed before he was born. Now get this right. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. So now he goes on and goes on and tells us in verse 14, John chapter 1. He says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth. Now that's what he says. He says the word has existed from the beginning. But then he tells us a time came when the world became flesh and dwelt among us. Now, understand this. Ah, we keep out here. Before Mary got pregnant and gave birth to Jesus, that was not, <laughs> that was not the first time the word was becoming flesh. But that was the first time that he was dwelling with us. Several times in scripture, you read about, for example, Melchizedek. Who do you think Melchizedek was? Melchizedek was the word that was made flesh. But he didn't dwell. He came and finished his work 
and left. What did he come to do? He came to speak the word. Praise God. He came to speak the word. He came to speak the word to Abraham. Praise God. Now, several times in scripture, you read about um, even Abraham when, when he entertained three guests, two angels and God himself. What do you think that was? That was the word of God that was made flesh. Praise God. Yeah, that was the word of God made flesh, but he didn't dwell. So the first time, now that's the distinction, that's the difference in this whole thing. The first time the word was made flesh and then he dwelled with us was in the person of the Jesus that Mary gave birth to. Yeah. Time is up. <laughs> It is good. I trust the Spirit of God to help us explain this tomorrow. It is good because this is, this is so important. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.